Technical industries generally have an association of members and the purpose of that group is to get together and develop testing standards, best practices, case studies, and things like that. Within the HVAC industry, that group is known as ASHRAE. Now this group gets together and they, they develop air standards for different industries. And one of those industries is the healthcare industry. And today we'd like to talk to Kyle Peterson, the healthcare segment manager for CAMFIL about some of the activities that ASHRAE has been doing in regards to the recent pandemic. So Kyle, before we get started, if you would, take a second, introduce us to yourself. Well, hello, Mark. Uh, and first off, thanks for having me on. Uh, it's, it's great to spend a little time with you talking to each other through our respective computers. Um, as you mentioned, I'm the healthcare segment manager for CAMFIL. I cover the Western United States. And I'm, I'm very proud to say that this year, 2021, marks my 10 year anniversary with CAMFIL. Now much of that time was spent working in our national accounts program, but for the last four years, uh, my time has been dedicated exclusively to working within the healthcare industry. Great, thanks Kyle, appreciate that. Um, so, you know, air filtration has made its way into the news quite a bit lately. Again, probably not for the reason we would like that to happen, um, but have you found that that is a topic that's uh, commonly discussed in the, uh, the healthcare industry? Oh, yes, definitely. You know, uh, increasing awareness about indoor air quality has always been a priority for us here at Campville. But the uh, pandemic has certainly brought that issue to the forefront of people's minds. And nowhere has that been more evident than on the front lines at healthcare facilities. You know, not, not too long ago, we had a governor uh, actually drop the term MERV into a press conference. And, and, you know, that's a that's a term that's just, you don't hear much outside of the uh, air filtration industry. Uh, it, the reality is though that, uh, you know, portable air cleaners with HEPA filters have now become a hot commodity. They're selling like hotcakes. Uh, you know, who would have thought a year ago that something like an air purifier would turn into the tickle me Elmo Christmas president of 2020. So yes, uh, you know, people everywhere are really starting to notice more and more the invisible particles that are in the air we breathe and have been, always been around us. And, and that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I think that's true. I remember hearing that press conference and that term was dropped and I, uh, I kind of chuckled a little bit. I, I never thought I would see that. Um, so specifically, uh, again, as you said, everyone's discussing air quality and those invisible particles that have been in the air all along, but sometimes never noticed them. But specifically, can you talk about a little bit what hospitals and healthcare has been specifically doing? Well, yeah, um, but first off, you know, healthcare isn't just about hospitals. I mean, yeah, most people, when you think about healthcare, uh, think about the big medical centers with the giant H on the front of the building. Uh, but, but healthcare facilities also include smaller outpatient facilities, uh, urgent care facilities, as well as residential facilities like nursing homes and assisted living facilities. And when you start to take this broader view of healthcare, you really begin to see how vital good air quality is in healthcare. Okay, that, that's a fair point. And, and, uh, we don't want to fall into that trap when we say healthcare. We automatically, as you say, think about a, a big building with an H on it. That's not necessarily true. It's it's much more comprehensive than that. So, does ASHRAE look at it the same way? Do they do they view the healthcare industry as an entire segment, or are they fall into the trap that I just fell in and just think about a building with a big H on? It? Well, they definitely do look at it the same way. Uh, you know, ASHRAE has a number of committees. Uh, that focus on various various areas of HVAC. Uh, and one of these committees, it's worked through the years uh, to, to develop a standard known as 170. It's called the ventilation of healthcare facilities. And the standard describes a set of minimum requirements intended for adoption by code enforcing agencies. Now that text is lifted directly from the forward of the ASHRAE 170 standard. And, and what they mean by that is that the committee draws on experience of its members and other people in the industry to develop this baseline 
standard with the hopes that local municipalities will enforce them to ensure public safety. And it's important to keep in mind that ASHRAE 170 is a continuous work in progress. It's not like they, uh, the committee just came up with a document and the standard once and, and that's it. There can, the committee continually they meet on a regular basis and they continually uh, make changes to the standard to reflect technological or environmental changes that are occurring out in the real world. Okay, so if this has been going on continuously, as you say, uh, this pandemic obviously had to have a major impact. Is there anything specific that they've been addressing recently that would be valuable for you to tell our viewers? Uh, yeah, well, there's been a, a number of significant uh, updates recently, but I wouldn't characterize them as necessarily being solely driven by the events of 2020. It's important to understand that you know changes to any of the ASHRAE standards require consensus from that specific committee, and that's not something that just happens overnight. Um, there's a lot of research that can take months and months uh, to accumulate supporting data to, to arrive at a consensus. And now that's not to say that ASHRAE hasn't been at the forefront of supporting the HVAC industry uh, during this pandemic. They absolutely have been, and, and they provided some invaluable information. But the specific updates that I want to address with 170 today are, are really independent of those uh, efforts, and many of them have been going on well before the pandemic yet. Okay. Then, then let's take this approach and let's imagine that I'm a hospital manager. See, I just I just did it again, Kyle. I said hospital instead of healthcare. Let's imagine I'm a healthcare facility manager. Specifically, what are some of the recent things that have occurred that I should pay closer attention to? Well, Mark, as I alluded to earlier, the first thing uh, to point out is that the recommendations moving forward have been separated into three main categories inpatient spaces or hospitals, outpatient spaces or urgent care facilities, and finally, and very important in today's world, residential spaces like nursing homes and assisted living facilities. Okay, that, that would be very helpful. I can understand how a, a facility manager and any one of those would be able to refer to that and pick up some good guidance and tips and best practices and minimum requirements, things like that. Now, when we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, you had mentioned in addition to that, there was one more interesting thing that was put in there near the end that you thought was very important. Uh, in addition to the expanded tables and, and the upgraded MERV requirements in certain areas, addendum A also includes an informative Appendix C. And uh, Table C-1 of the appendix it break down, breaks down the recommended filter requirements uh, by space into four different levels. It gives you kind of an airplane 40,000 foot view of what's in the tables. And they did this uh, in an effort to help engineers and facility managers determine what filters they should be using in areas of the hospital that weren't specifically uh, mentioned in, in, one, in the tables. So level one, uh, is for areas that require just a MERV 8 filtration, level two is for MERV 14, level three for MERV 16, and finally level four is for areas in the hospital that require HEPA filtration. So it's a nice handy kind of cliff's note table uh, to aid engineers and facility managers in their filtration choices. But it's, it's really the notes below table C1 that uh, to me, really reveal both the intention and the direction that the 170 committee is headed. And, and in the very first note, note A below table C.1 says, where listed MERV rating is assumed to be non-degrading. Now the only commonly available test we have in the industry to determine uh, whether a filter is non-degrading or not is ASHRAE 52.2 Appendix J or the MERV A test. So while addendum A doesn't specifically call out MERV A values in the tables, they're certainly implied and, and rightfully so. I mean, filters used in healthcare facilities should maintain their rated efficiencies for their entire service life. I don't think there's really anybody out there, particularly at this moment in time that would wanna argue with that. 
So to me, a denim A is a major step in the right direction to improve indoor air quality and safety for both patients and employees at our nation's healthcare facilities. Yes, thanks, Scott. I, I, uh, I agree with you. I think that that's true. And we've had a lot of discussions on here about MERV and MERV A. And I think you're exactly correct to say that in a uh, healthcare facility, uh, the idea of they've developed a certain efficiency that they want that to be maintained. Um, so Carl, let's wrap this up. I would, you know, my first thought is, I guess, hearing all this is I'm, I'm uh, comforted to know that there's a lot of work going out there as all of us occasionally, unfortunately, have to visit healthcare facilities. And it's nice to know that there's a group out there trying to take care of the air quality. So Kyle, appreciate it. Thank you for that information. And if you would go ahead and uh, end this for us, if you would, Kyle, thank you. Well, thank you, Mark. And once again, thank you for having me on today. It's been great catching up. Be safe.